Welcome to Talking Theatre. Tonight for our first episode we have David Whiteley and Alexis Scott from Vacant Theatre who are going to be talking about an upcoming production. Welcome. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Very well. So you guys are right in the middle of rehearsing for your new show. Can you tell us what it is? It's Frankie and Johnny and the Claire de Lune. Yes, yes. Now this is a, a play by a very famous American playwright named Terence McNally. Uh, why did you decide to do this show? Um. Well, it had been on my radar for a while, and it struck me knowing the kind of theater that Alexis was uh, looking to do with Vacant House Theater. Um, intimate stuff, site-specific stuff, that, uh, and meaningful stuff that, um, that this show, which has one single setting, which is a small studio apartment, and is about deep heartfelt stuff and whether uh, whether what could be a one night stand is going to be the end of a kind of non-relationship or could it be the start of a lifelong relationship and the bravery to overcome past scars. Um, it seemed like it fit all the things of what Vacant House Theatre was to be about so I put it to her. I think this is a show that should be on your radar, and she immediately and I did. Loved it. It, is, it is a great play, a great play, and we'll talk a little bit about the, the style and, and uh, the unique setting, the venue where it's going to be, but maybe for our audience who doesn't know, who may not know much about the play, maybe you could tell us a bit about the, uh, the story. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's about uh, Frankie and Johnny. They meet at a, at a diner where they work, um, and it's their first date. It's so, sort of their fir the first day that tur turns into a potential hookup, well actually actually a hookup situation, and then um, Johnny kind of just won't leave and Frankie sort of... Yeah, so the play picks up the very first moments of the play, even if it was in a conventional theater, at curtains or up or lights up specifically before you see anything is the final moments of them making love. So what the action is, is, as the lights do start to come up and they're stumbling around in the dark, is the immediate aftermath of two people who've just slept together for the first time in Frankie's apartment. And was that already the end? And is this the, mm, that was nice, now get the fuck out of my <laughs> apartment and leave me alone and don't be weird when we see each other at work? Or is it just the start of something? It sounds like it could be a fantastic comedy. Is it a comedy? Can you tell the, the audience a bit about the, the tone of the show? Can you tell us a little bit? I know it's a, a romantic comedy, but what can they expect to see when they, when they come in? It's enduring, endearing. It's a, it's a comedy um, mostly based off of like the New York sort of banter that the characters have. Right, right. It's also very like deep-rooted in a lot of past histories that the, these characters bring in with them and the the scars that they have and the fears that they have so it's sort of like an interesting mix of everything but it, it's a comedy of the yeah. heart so what is it about i mean terence mcnally wrote some huge huge plays he's one of uh, america's biggest playwrights most important playwrights love valor compassion kiss of the spider woman um what is it about his writing you think that's really uh unique and, and might be interesting to uh to an ottawa crowd it's really beautiful um and, and especially for Vacant House, it's very specific in the sense of characters and where they are and who they are. He writes like this full picture that mm -hmm. doesn't actually fully say it, so a lot of stuff is in the subtext for us to figure out, which is really fun. But we get to kind of create this world for people because we're doing it in a basement apartment. Tell us about that. We get to create the entire world. Um, and kind of like going into the show will be kind of like being on the set of a film. Hmm. as well because uh, we're going to be... Yeah, there isn't the distance you have to kind of project things at, at a larger theatre. So part, partly it's to do with size and immediacy, but it's also the, the completeness of the world, that you don't have to forgive that the walls shake because they're made of thin plywood or stretched canvas, and the, the door's a bit wonky because it's just being held in mid-space. You're seeing people really cook. It's a real bed, a real window looking out to a real street. It's, 
all the circumstances have all the immediacy and the close contact of, like, I, I often like to think of it as uh, uh, a, a couple of walked in and they're in the middle of an intense conversation into a room and they don't realize that you're in the room and you go, ah, I should not be privy to something this private, I, but they'll see me if I go, I'll just pretend to be invisible and it's like, what am I a party to? Okay, now a lot of that safety of there's this fourth wall and the stage is over there and I'm safely in my seat and the audience and this has nothing to do with me. But a lot of people now, what you're describing may be really intimidated by that. A lot of people don't no. want to be too close to the theater. Is it still... Um, it will be safe, yeah. <laughs> you're safe, right? They're not, actors aren't talking to you. Yeah, right? because it's they, in their reality, you don't exist. So you're not going to be dragged out on stage to make to do some scene. You have your own kind of privacy there, but it's this intimate privacy where you're being allowed in to the very private mm. lives of these Almost like you're a voyeur. Yeah, and it yeah. allows us to like bring uh, more themes in the play for the audience's experience. Mm -hmm. you know? Why does Ottawa need to see this show? Because it will affect you more intimately, personally, and directly than just about anything you're going to get to see. And last question, Alexis. What can audiences expect when they sit down in this person's basement and watch you guys walk out on stage? To feel connected to a theater experience like you've never been before. Come see Frankie and Johnny at the Claire de Lune. By Terrence McNally. May 21st to 30th. At 8 p.m. At 122 Stewart Street. Costumes, Costumes optional. optional. And after the flip, we're going to be talking with the amazing Sean Tui from the Ottawa Little Theatre and his upcoming production of Breaking the Code.